You've asked me about ageing and population growth, but actually I think the, big, the biggest change over the last 50 years has actually been the um, disconnect between parenthood and partnership. So uh, really the introduction of the pill, effective contraception in, in the 1960s, has effectively removed that link between parenthood and partnering, which has then led on to a whole set of demographic changes, both in terms of the timing of births, the timing of partnerships, who we live with, which is then related to population ageing, because behind population ageing is reduced fertility. So for me, that's the biggest shift. And then the other shift, I guess, is increasing life expectancy. We've never been able to control our fertility. We've never been able to choose when we have children. So now men and women can choose to have children without, um, well, they can choose to have sex without worrying about having children. So uh, sex is now not, nothing to do with procreation, really. The biggest challenge is actually going to be how we decide in future to organise care of older people. And so we're going to have more people living longer with more diverse life courses in terms of their family relationships. So I think it's going to be a challenge about how we A, care for that bigger group of people and B, how we renegotiate our public and private responsibilities. I think uh, we haven't really thought about how it also interacts with pensions. So we t people either look at pensions or people tend to look at, at care. But we actually need to be looking at economic and social resources in later life in a, in a more holistic way, which then brings demography back centrally, both in terms of pensions but also in terms of care. Well, related to care is work. So I, and I think work links back to pensions and links back to care. So it's how we organise paid and unpaid work across the life course. So all these things are interconnected with each other. So if we reorganise work, then we actually we may be able to uh, reorganise our unpaid work across our life course as well, to then incorporate care for, for parental care and for childcare and paid work. And so it's, it's really taking a life course perspective on social policy um, and also thinking about intergenerational life course exchange and social policy. So it's, it's quite a complex thing, but I think we're going to have to start thinking in those terms. Yeah, I think, I think we have to look to Scandinavia, as we always do, uh, and I think that the, um, the Swedish uh, pension reforms are actually amongst the most um, innovative pension reforms in Europe, where they've started to bring in a, a cohort element to, to the actuarial basis of the, the pension. So, and then there are other smaller experiments around things like time banks, it means that if, um, if you put into the community and then you can, you can get time back out. So if you, if you um, care for your neighbour and then later on you need, you need assistance. But these are very much small scale things. But I think we need to start thinking about how we transfer resources across the life course and between people, not just money, but also time. The big debates of the, the 70s and 80s were focused on, on women balancing their uh, productive and their reproductive roles. And now we're introducing a third dimension, which is their caring roles, uh, which are not reproductive, they're the other end of the life course. And I think the restructuring of the life course means that we have to now start thinking about uh, non-productive or non-paid work in, in a different way. So the pressures are mounting, so maybe it's the opportunity. If we don't do it, and somebody's going to have to pay to take care of older people, so actually governments will start to think about it because it will actually become cost-effective. I don't see much evidence of, uh, 
a war between generations. And if you look at um, differences within generations, so if we think about differences by class, for example, those differences are still bigger within generations than they are between generations. So I don't think the class war is going to be replaced by a, an age war. Mm -hmm. Plus, we all live in all of those phases as we age. So we are children, then we're adults, and then we're older people. So I think that also has um, an element to play. Those people who don't have children, they're the ones who are paying um, more of the tax burden. So they're actually paying for the education of those who do have children. So I think it's, again, that's setting us up in a slightly um, uh, false dichotomy between the childless and the, the childed.